everyone feels my coming at ya. Multiplayer is probably one of the most popularly requested things that I see here on the channel or in just kind of broadly within the VR space and probably for good reason because social VR is a pretty commonly leveraged tool to make VR even more immersive. And we have a few videos here on the channel that go over various different solutions, but in this video, I wanted to specifically go over what I think is probably the best paradigm as far as getting this implemented. And we'll be taking a look at the Mobile Edgex Edge Multiplay solution, which I think will work pretty hand in hand with VRTKs to make sure that you have a cross platform and uh, a hosting solution that is pretty easy for you to port pretty much anywhere and so that you have the choice of how you want to go about handling your multiplayer and overall having a pretty lightweight experience. If you do have questions, you can head over to either the VRTK Discord or the Mobile Ajax Discord where you can ask kind of questions in those specific realms based on whatever you're looking forward to doing. But overall, I think by combining these together, you get a pretty powerful solution where you have multiplayer working in a flexible cross-platform environment. So to get started with this, we'll just jump into Unity here. I've done a lot of the importing just to, to save some time, quite frankly, but from a high level perspective, what you'll need to do is head over to the package manager and you'll want to import in a few things. So first is you'll need the mobile Ajax SDK, which will be able to connect you to their backend where edge multiplayer sample servers are deployed. You'll also want to have the VRTK toolkit and all of the different Tilia packages that you would need for using VRTK. Depending on the headset you want to use, there are a few pre-built in packages. In our case, we'll just be looking at the Oculus integration here that's been already provided by Tilia to just kind of make our implementation simpler. Of course, if you want to use things like OpenXR or if you want to use say SteamVR, there are solutions for that as well, or you could implement it yourself. Uh, I've also gone ahead, added in our interactables just to create a very simple demo where you're just kind of tossing a cube back and forth. And then finally, you'll need the track alias component. This is specifically really important so that you can handle the multiplayer in a cross-platform compatible way. One other thing I should know is that because we're using Oculus, you'll want to go ahead and import in the Oculus SDK, which is available on the Unity Asset Store. This will be dependent specifically, of course, on what VR headset you're targeting and what SDKs you're using. So with all of that said, let's first take a look at setting up the multiplayer. Heading over to the Mobile Edgex menu at the top of the Unity menu, we'll first go ahead, grab the Elge multiplayer example. This is the client source code that's all open source and readily easily to use. The server is open source as well, where you can go ahead and just grab the client and have that working with the backend. So that's fairly straightforward. Next thing you want to do is head over again, back to the mobile Ajax SDK, and then set up the credentials that you'll need to connect to the mobile Ajax backend. In this case, what we'll be doing is connecting to the mobile Ajax samples. And then here are the, the credentials at this time, go ahead, click setup, which will then connect, verify that it can find the server and it'll try to connect you to the closest available server that's possible. And that's kind of, and that's kind of the use case for the SDK primarily. If that goes ahead, you'll see the mobile object settings here, which means you're good to go. And we'll now have edge multiplay. If you wanna test this out, there are a few examples here. I'm not gonna be diving into them in this video, but if you do just kind of wanna play around with say ping pong or something like that, feel free to do so. But with that setup in place, let's go ahead now and get set up with Edge Multiplay. For starters, let's create a very simple game object here and we'll add on the Edge Manager. This is responsible for connecting you to the backend so that you have the uh, ability to communicate with the actual Docker server that's been deployed. Here you have a few different parameters that we'll use. We'll take a look at the these in a little bit, but the, the point here being, if you don't want to use the setup feature and you just kind of want to test locally, you could do so. Here, you set up a player avatar, which again, we'll take a look at in a little bit after we've set up VRTK. The other things you'll want to take a look at doing are first, let's create a quick folder here to house some scripts. 
There are assets that are available for Edge Multiplayer to make the setup even simpler. So we'll be creating a game manager as well as creating a player manager. These are templates that just kind of pre-populate and then get added into your scripts folder here. As you can see that happening and you can see and take a look at these templates just to kind of get a sense of what's happening. But at a very high level, all they're doing is just kind of listening for events and then you can plug in any application or game specific logic based on whatever events are within the template. Last thing we we'll wanted to do before switching over to VRTK is just drag this game manager onto the edge manager as you'll need both of those working in tandem. And for now, I think we're good on the multiplayer side. Let's switch over to the VRTK side of things. So for starters, let's go ahead grab a VRTK prefab, which will be within our packages here. And it'll be, I believe this camera rig. Yeah, this camera rig, that is our Oculus integration. This is basically just a pre-configured prefab that integrates the Oculus SDK with VRTK. And if you just take a quick look here, it's really kind of defined by this linked alias which is responsible for just taking that SDK and then mapping hands and head, as well as getting the velocity and haptics if you want that inputted. So very useful in that regard. This represents our VR avatar, which is great, but now we need a ability to spawn up a prefab of this avatar and also not have it directly tied to the camera as well as any of our input. That's where the tracked alias comes in. We already went ahead and included that when we imported it in. So let's just go ahead and find it and from our packages. There should be a prefab that we'll go ahead and drag in here. This is our tracked alias facade. This is responsible for basically making a copy of our camera rig and making it so that we can spawn this in at any given point and also acts as a very convenient way for us to set up say meshes or really anything that we wanna represent in the context of multiplayer. The way this works quite simply is you set what are the linked aliases that you'd like to copy. So in our case, we already have one assigned for our Oculus integration. We would simply just need to drag that in. Because we want this hooked up with multiplayer and more specifically, we want this as a spawnable prefab for our multiplayer game. We're actually gonna to need to do this at runtime, which will do using the player manager. So simply put here, let's set this back to zero. I'm gonna go ahead, add on a player manager. And this player manager is that template that we created earlier. This is what allows our player to interact with the networking. The other thing we'll also wanna go ahead and add while we're at it is an edge multiplayer observer. This is a component that is specific to the player manager and works hand in hand with it to allow you to send the positional updates or rotational updates of anything tied to your player. So for example, if we want to track head rotation, hand rotation, this is the way to do it. And conveniently, all you need to do is tell it what the observables are, set up a transform, and then define whether you want to sync position, sync rotation. Because this is a tracked alias, we have all of that located here as part of the alias with our head, head, headset, our left controller, our right controller. So all we need to do from a practical standpoint is just simply drag on all of these game objects onto each of these different elements, set that we wanna sync it for both the position and rotation. And that pretty much covers everything that we need as far as edge multiplayer observers go. That automatically gets hooked into the player manager and so now we have that all synced together. Like I mentioned earlier, we need to just quickly head into the player manager and then add a very small change here. So on the start function of our player manager, we'll simply want to add in this small bit of code. All this is saying is for our player manager, if it is the local player, i.e. I'm the client, I'm not a copy of someone else's player avatar, then let's go ahead and get our tracked alias facade, which is on our game object already go to the camera rigs and add on the linked alias associated uh, collection, which is the one that if we go back into Unity, that's associated with our Oculus integration, this guy right here. There should ever only be one of these in the scene for your given player in this simple setup here. And so we can simply just find that object within the scene, 
not the most performant way, but very simple nonetheless to be able to assign that there. That will automatically do everything we need at runtime. And so from a practical standpoint, we're actually done. So let's just go ahead, name this avatar, create a prefabs folder in here. And with that created, let's actually just simply go ahead and drag our prefab onto the prefabs to create a new prefab. Then delete this from the scene, head back onto our edge manager here. We now have a spawnable prefab that we can use. So let's go ahead, drag that in. And let's also go ahead and create two spawn locations. These need to match the number of spawn locations for your given map. So in our case, we'll just very simply just put a two here because we're only using two players. And that should be everything that you need to get this up and running. For testing purposes, actually, you will probably want to head back onto your avatar and then you can just assign a very simple cube uh, or sphere to represent the head and the hands. So we can just call this a sphere for testing purposes. If we want, let's go ahead, create a capsule for our left hand, create a capsule for our right hand, just to make sure that this is working. And that's it to actually just get an avatar that is synced with multiplayer. If you wanna go ahead and test this out, you'll just need two devices and then quite literally just have one that's in the editor, maybe another one that's in a build, and then put them together to sync that up. And you should now be able to see each other's avatar synced in close to real time. And that would be everything you need to get VRTK working in a multiplayer scenario. Of course, all of the multiplayer specific steps are gonna depend on whatever solution you ultimately end up using. I just kind of found this to be a very convenient way with practically no coding to be able to go ahead and set up an avatar that works in multiplayer and could be cross-platform. If you do have questions, definitely let us know down in the comments below, as well as, as I mentioned earlier, head over to Discords respectively for any specific implementation questions. But I think that should do it for now. So until next time, this has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing in.